Well, I want to welcome you to Living Life. Today we're going to see in our text that Jesus, he heals a demon-possessed man. And there is much that's going to happen throughout this event. And so we have the people that are watching this, they ask the question, could this really be the son of David? I mean, they're on the verge of believing Jesus is the Messiah, the long expected one. But of course, the Pharisees, they, do, they are not on the verge of believing. They're on the verge of actually attacking Jesus. They do not like what they see. Now, this man who was healed was blind and he was mute. And now he can see and now he can speak. And I just imagine when his eyes were open and he sees Jesus and he hears the question being asked by the people, could this be the son of David? That he would say, yes. I mean, the very first words that he would use would be to proclaim this good news that Jesus is the one. Well, today, as we're going to now enter into this passage of Scripture, we see that the Pharisees and Jesus are going to be at odds. In fact, the Pharisees are going to try to kind of stand between Jesus and the people, and that they're going to not, they're going to try to have people have no confidence in Jesus. Well, we here living life, we want to have confidence in Jesus, and we want to bring people to Jesus. So let's have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to welcome what God has to say to us now in his holy word. Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 37. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad, for a tree is recognized by its fruit. You broad of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. The Pharisees stand between Jesus and the people. I mean, the Pharisees, these are the ones that should have known better. They're the ones that knew the scriptures. They should have understood that Jesus indeed was this forever king that has come. And yet their eyes were blinded. They just would not 
see. And they didn't want anyone else to have any kind of confidence in Jesus. But the people around them, they're like on the verge of really giving their lives over to Jesus, trusting him, having confidence in him. And so what do the Pharisees do? They try to turn people away from Jesus and not see that the Holy Spirit was actually at work in his life and helping him to do the things that he was doing, like healing a demon-possessed man. In fact, what they did is they said that Jesus performed this miracle not by the power of God, but by the power of the ruler of the demons. And Jesus is like saying to them, well, that doesn't make sense, does it? In fact, he says in verse 26, if Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? Well, that makes sense. I mean, there's just no reason why he would do that unless God was at work in his life and that he was working through him and that indeed he was and is the Messiah, the forever king, the long expected one. But the Pharisees wanted to stand between Jesus and the people. And you know, it makes me think about like in our day and age with the universities where we can have people can be experts in any field of study and have no thought of God. And that's really sad because they're like driving a wedge between the truth of God and all that there is here for us to study. But nevertheless, back here in our text, there is an incredible verse that if you underline things in your Bible, I want to encourage you to underline verse 28. Or if you have your devotional book, this Living Life devotional book, which is wonderful, it's a great tool for our spiritual formation. Well, in verse 28, Jesus says these words. He says, If it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. It's like Jesus is saying, look, you've just encountered the range of God's effective work right here as I have been healing this demon-possessed man and the other things that you see me doing. You know, God is on the move. He's active and involved, and he is overcoming evil with good. And we see that in Jesus. And yet, we know that Satan, he is trying to tempt people away from putting their trust and confidence in our Lord Jesus. And yet he, so he's, but yet he's tied up. In fact, he's a defeated enemy. And Jesus calls us to make a commitment to him. And we see that like in verse 30, where Jesus says, whoever is not with me, is against me, right? There's no middle ground. And there's a time now for us to make a commitment, a firm decision. I remember when I was 10 years old, I had really never doubted God, but I needed to like put a flag in the ground and say, I trust you, Jesus. I know and believe that you are my savior. You're my Lord. And whatever it is that you want for me, that's what I want. Well, I want to encourage you that if you've never made that firm commitment, that you've just kind of been waffling in your walk with the Lord, I want to encourage you to today, this would be the best day, put that flag in the ground and say, yes, Lord, I believe. Now, there's a troubling thing that Jesus then mentions in our text. He talks about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And this is what's called the unpardonable sin. And it's like, oh no, you know, what is it? Have, have I committed it? Well, it's really just a, a persistent, ongoing, wanting people to just, you, you want them to ruin their any confidence in Jesus. You're going to just stand between Jesus and others so that they don't put their trust in the Lord. 
And you might be saying, well, uh uh-oh, have I committed that sin? And if you're worried and bothered, I, I can tell you, you haven't, because you wouldn't be under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. So instead of being ones like the Pharisees who stood between Jesus and others, let's stand up for Jesus and let's draw people to him by how we live and what we say. And let's do that to God's glory and our joy. So as we close our Living Life devotion today, and we've seen this great event take place where Jesus heals a demon-possessed man, and yet the Pharisees, they are thinking, he must have done this through the power of Satan. And that didn't make sense because, of course, Jesus was doing it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's the people that are watching this that they are wanting to draw close to Jesus. They're on the verge of trusting him. And yet the Pharisees stand between them. And this man who was healed, he at one point, he was blind and mute, but now he can see and he can speak. But now the Pharisees, they're really the ones in the story who are blind. And we could say they shouldn't have spoken because we then see what's truly in their hearts. In fact, in the closing verses of our text today, it says the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And so we see what the Pharisees' hearts were full of. They, it was full of hatred, and they didn't want to give up their position of authority. They didn't want people to draw close to the Lord. Well, let's be people who do draw close to the Lord. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that as we turn to your holy word, that it's so clear that Jesus indeed is the long-expected one, our Messiah, our Lord. And Father, we want to put our full trust and hope and confidence in him. And through our lives, Lord, we would love to see others come to know Jesus. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen.